night. This is Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. It's Friday night and looking forward to seeing who pops in here. We'll get this show going. Uh, tonight we are going to be working on a French Provencial small buffet that I acquired a few weeks back and uh, it's ready for some new look. And tonight, I've got some inspiration that I think would work. All right, someone asked me last week, where do I get my inspiration from? And sometimes it's random, sometimes it's the transfer, the piece. This one, I'm gonna show you since I can find it. I saw this, um, I'm assuming it's a Netflix or a movie poster of a movie with John Wayne in it called True Grit. And I really like, I really like having some age to my pieces. I like layering, I like dry brushing, I like wet, wet, wet. And this one, the color palette just really struck me. The unfortunate part is the color palette struck me kind of on the wrong piece, meaning this is French Provincial. I don't think I'd ever see John Wayne with a French Provincial dresser, so. But anyways, we're gonna roll with it. So that's my inspiration and we're gonna make it work. And I just wanted to give you guys a quick view of that. So for me, it really needed two coats, follow the directions, it needed slick stick. You know, for my top, fake sides, everything's fake, you know. But we're gonna make it look great, right? That's our goal, that's what we do as furniture artists is we make things look great. So I've done two coats of slick stick and then I, earlier today, I put a coat of driftwood. I kind of thought it was pretty cool that I was doing True Grit and Driftwood. Kind of sounds Western, right? So just a base of Driftwood kind of gives us that warm gray tone. And I think that looks really nice. Some colors that I, and I'm gonna be, as I often do, I'm gonna be pretty much winging it tonight. I, I don't know, I'm thinking a little bit of dry brush, a little bit of wet layering. So if you like making up as you go and you do the same thing or you just wanna watch, sit back, maybe holler at a friend, make sure they're watching. Um, some other colors I have that are in the same tones I felt worked really well. Um, I have French linen, and then this is actually dry sage. I just used dry sage on my last piece. And then I have coffee bean. They're all somewhat in the, uh, we would call it analogous. They're on the same part of the color wheel. And I think they're all gonna help us create the look. Now, just to give you, in case you wondered, I took the drawer and the doors off because whenever the, the doors cover my piece, it's a little harder to paint when your drawers, doors are covering. So I took them off just so I can get all the prep and everything done. And so if I'm working, so we may, I may bring the camera over when I work on the doors. I, my favorite part of the piece is the doors. They've got this really lovely decorative piece. Again, kind of weird to have this really nice piece and I'm going with kind of a true grit. But if you think about it, uh, a better way to describe the look we're going for, I think would be more of a French cottage country. You know, maybe it's been in a small country French house and uh, it just, over time, it's gotten worn out. So you pick whichever one that uh, sounds best to you. That's what we're going with. If usually uh, when I'm doing something that has a little bit of character and layers, uh, I oftentimes don't sweat the fact that uh, the first coat is transparent. So I'm not trying to put a whole, you could if you wanted to put an entire second coat on here so that you can't see any of the, I'm trying to see if the camera's gonna pick it up. You can see the uh, brush strokes on this piece. Let me turn down the light a little bit. We're just gonna have our time seeing everything. So anyways, you, you know what, if you've done chalk paint before, you know what the first coats look like. It's got a little bit of a transparent streak and, and I'm okay with that. So if we're gonna go French Cottage, it needs to have a little bit of that character going in it. We just, we'll work on this side first. Tars here, good to see you tonight. I'll tell you what let's do. 
I'm gonna do my best because sometimes I can gravitate to blending. I don't wanna to blend tonight. I think that would be counter, counter grit, right? So I'm not really, in, right now, I'm not really inventing a new technique. I'm doing things that kind of have been done before. Um, just because I know they're tried and true, fun, uh, accomplishable techniques for me. But I don't want to be, I, I definitely don't want to be, any of this to be forced or formal or precise. So, in fact, I'm just going to keep going with the same brush. I'm misting because I, I don't want to get too thick with this. So I'm going right into French linen and I'm just layering. Maybe let's even bring in my, my larger spray bottle so I can get a little bit more movement. Those colors are really close in tone. And that's okay, it may not even be coming through on camera. Tell you what, let's just go to chocolate, uh, coffee bean. And let's see if this will, I think if I go thin enough, this will work. All right, I'm gonna switch my brush because I do not want to go that dark and do that pink. This is where the grit comes in. And it's gonna mix a little bit. I'm totally experimenting right now, which I'm really cool with. I don't do that a lot. Sometimes I kind of wonder what I'm gonna do and I just do it, but tonight I am really experimenting. I don't want is I don't want to have these brush strokes and as I've done many times you can come back with like a rag a sponge some other object that'll dilute and in this case I'm actually gonna bring that let's bring this coffee bean texture up a little higher This rag has a really cool pattern on it. Let's see if it'll catch in. See that? So I actually like how it's giving us some of that worn. What I try to accomplish oftentimes with techniques like this is give it some depth that doesn't look predictable, meaning it doesn't look like I brushed it. You know what I mean? So I'm giving it some character. And I'm dabbing in some of the top areas just because I want I like the texture up there. How's that grit looking now? But yeah, that's really cool. I like that a lot. And I can come back and I can add some shading. My rip, my rag is slightly wet. You know, not like dripping, but I think that's cool. There's so many ways you can do this. Like I could bring some of this cream down, but I, I think I'd like to leave the top fairly cleaner and, and move darker. That's gonna add a lot of drama. With that in mind then, so if that's gonna be our base to our technique, we kinda need to set, if we put the door right here, that means that about right here, halfway about where the hardware's at, is where we need to bring our grit back in, okay? So let's work on the door. Just to, again, we're just like flesh, fleshing out. Is that the right word? We're just seeing if the technique, we're putting it to work. First thing we did was dried sage. Remembering not to put a crazy thick coat on there. We want some of the driftwood to come through. We want our layers to be seen. Keeping it wet. Now this is not vertical, so I'm not gonna get any of those drips unless I stand it up. So we'll go about right there, and I'll switch to French, 
It does have some French linen in it and the colors are so close that no harm done. But I do like the idea of changing the color a little bit. Then we'll jump over to coffee bean. I, if I use gravel road, I think I'm going to use it for shading. I think that'll add yet another dimension to it. I'm going to bring out the big squirt bottle because I want this to be. I don't want this to be too thick. not painting opaque, I'm painting transparent and thin. And right now I'm just getting the color on there. I don't want to go too high that the paint starts to mix. That's where I want to stop. If I start mixing it, then we're going to create another color that the piece didn't have. So now I'm going to come back using my brush that has texture. I didn't really pick this rag out for tonight. It just happened to be the one I have, but I, I'll go with that accident, right? Okay, so I'm just working it up. This is not going to be uh, the delicate piece that some might try on this furniture, but if you're following me, you know I just did some delicate nightstand, so I'm ready for some variety. Well, quite, quite the different story between these two doors, right? What do y'all think? I'll go up just a little bit. And I tell you what, the hardware is going to be right here, so let's put a little bit of character around the hardware. So I'm just dabbed a little bit of color. And we'll just fade it with the rag. Just a little bit of. So when I'm done, I'm pretty sure that I think this will look really nice with the shading. So Driftwood, one layer driftwood, and multiple colors there. The hardware, let's see if I can find it. I'll polish up the hardware. Is something like that. This may be one of those pieces where you just look at it and you go, uh, that's not working. But I, you have to have faith that it's all going to come together. If you, now's not the time to start questioning whether it's going to work because, you know, I don't have the doors on. But I think that's something that just experience will give you is over time you know kind of how things are going to work. One thing I'm looking at right now is what I'm looking right now is how um, consistency from door to door. Did I put too much coffee bean down? This one's looking a little darker so if I have to I could wipe some of this off and then just go back and lift up some more, more of the paint because I and that's the nice thing about having them side by side right now is that I can keep an eye on that oh we shouldn't forget this just give our little ring of it's almost like a, just a shadow really a little bit of dabbing here and there Looking okay. I love how my spray is, if it'll work, I'll bring in. I love how the spray is adding texture 
you see the spots, I think that's really nice. So this is the, this is the texture I'm getting, you can see up close. I might come back and actually do some dry brushing on edges just to kind of bring that out. So this will be a, a fun layered piece. And uh, in fact, I think I'm even going to like, kind of just like spritz it with some spray bottle just to give some of these water spots. I think that worked out so well. I love that happy accident. So we'll just spritz it with a little bit of water and see if we can get some water spots on it. Up here, if I go to the side, we are in the dried sage section. And uh, so I don't want to get, I really, we need to figure out if we're going to put any um, coffee bean on this panel. That's our, that's what we need to figure out. So I've been using the same brush for dried sage and French linen. When you're doing a project like this, where you're doing texture and depth, it's all fine. I think we should put some depth on here. So I'm going to come back with French linen in just a minute. I probably shouldn't have gone all the way down with dried sage, but that's okay. We're making it up. There's no rules. All right, so now we're gonna to go to French linen and all I'm doing here is adding a little bit of variety of color. You probably won't even be able to tell it on the camera, just randomly putting it in there. Just so that when it dries, I hopefully I can get a little bit of color variety so it's not so one note and it has some depth. We may need to come back with an even lighter color like a, uh, the sandbar drop cloth being warm that's just a little bit lighter. I might save the drop cloth, for example, for a highlight and dry brush that. Um, let's see about, I've got, I still have coffee bean on here. My brain is, is fried. So I think what I might do is I just want to add some color depth here, but I don't want to go too dark because I want to save the dark for the bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of just towards the bottom of the piece. Let's see if I can bring this closer, if that'll help. I hope it's better. So I'm just putting a little bit of this in there. I feel like I'm doing cheap Bob Ross craft project right now. It's okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a quick spray because the water helps give me a little bit of that workability on it. And I'm just adding the rag texture and lifting some of the paint off. I don't want you to see brush strokes is really my goal. I want it to look like it's naturally worn over time. And I'm going to show you guys, oh this looks so cool over there with my water spray that I did. You gotta try it on one of your projects. If j -Po's watching, I de you definitely, she's like, I've already been doing that for 10 years. Just kidding. She doesn't talk like that. I'm just messing with her. But I love what this rag does. It gets rid of the brush strokes. And if you're of any older age, you'll definitely know how folk painting was such a popular thing. Look what the water has done to my texture. Can y'all see that? How cool is that? I'm so gonna do this again on another project. I just, see how you just practice and exp but I love that. Talk about true grit. It almost looks like what salt does to watercolor if you've ever done watercolor painting. That's so cool. Is all I did was take this big spray bottle and just like just like barely pull the trigger and just let it spread large drops of water on there. All right, so that's the, that's the, uh, the look we're going for. And I am totally 
ecstatic about the accidental fun that's happening. I really don't want to shut down tonight without finishing this side because it's a, such a large area. So let's keep going with it. A little water. You know, you know the order, right? Dried sage first. Just get a rough, fast. Keep it thin, not too thick. If it gets thick, fine. Just don't, you know, maybe take some of the thick paint and spread it out so it has some depth to it. And then we'll switch to French linen just to change it up. Cross hatch back and forth. Really, the crosshatch is not because I want the crosshatch, but just to spread the paint out a little bit. I'm going back. My last stroke, pretty much, for the most part, is vertical. Okay, and that's as far as we want to go. Let's get coffee bean and my rag handy. I'm gonna have to make sure. I think I might have another, another rag like that. If not, I probably just won't. I really was not excited about this piece because it just isn't a super nice piece. So sometimes when you don't aren't excited about something, that's the time that you want to, you should experiment. Because you kind of have nothing to lose. Like this is one of those pieces where if it gets goes to the I'm not, not that I would, but if it goes to the dump, it's not the end of the world. It's, there's not a lick of real wood on it, but we're gonna make it look amazing, worth buying. And, um, but my point is that this is the kind of piece that, if you're gonna experiment, experiment on a piece that's, you, you know, there's nothing to lose. And I think it's gonna look great. I mentioned before, probably more, more character than most people would ever put into it. And maybe that's why I think it's gonna work out so well. Now, I did not on the other side do the misting spritz where I left water drops, so I need to remember I'm not gonna do that on this side. And the nice thing is if I, if I don't get this side perfectly matching the other side, it's okay. You'll never see the other side, other side. So I was just wiping it off. I think I did spray it a little bit just to keep, make it come off. We'll go up a little bit. I think we're attaining that, remember the look I showed you on the transfer? I think that's coming out pretty good. Just going up a little bit. So neat. Let's see if I can show you a little bit better on the side. The lights. Okay, so that's about as far as I can go with the camera. That gives you an idea. Let's come across back to the front. You can see water drips happening. The texture. The middle panel. It's a little yellower than it in person, but the technique is really what matters tonight more than anything, okay? I hope that was uh, enlightening. One, um, the transparency of winging it live on camera, that's not easy to do, you give it a try. <laughs> but I thought, uh, I've had people ask about the creative process, that, that was my creative process. I had a picture, had some ideas of colors, and we just made it up. And we found, that we came across some really cool techniques, like. I love how, what the water did to this piece. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, I put the link if you need to order some Dixie Mel products. Uh, check the link out in the description. I appreciate that. Or head over to my website anytime. Do something creative. Have fun. Good night.
that's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.